Wait a minute. Good afternoon, everybody. Good morning. Look at the beautiful weather out there. Come on. All right, welcome to Field of Honor, the seventh. Can you believe it's been seven years? The seventh annual Field of Honor, presented by the Asheville Randolph Chamber of Commerce and Asheboro Rotary. Can we give them a round of applause? Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm not going to stand here and talk a lot. My name is Larry Reed, WKXR Radio, and I'm honored to be the MC for this afternoon. I'm not going to talk a whole lot. I'm just going to tell you what's going to happen and we're going to make it happen. So here we go. First of all, we're going to have the presentation of the colors by the Asheville High School Air Force Junior ROTC. That will be followed by the National Anthem and that will be performed by Marcus Lauer. Marcus. Marcus belongs to Randolph County. He performs the national anthem at so many venues, professional venues, all over the country. And we are super proud of him. Rams are in the right here. Go Wildcats. Right. And also, I want to say as far as the Air Force Junior ROTC at Astro High School, under the direction of Master Sergeant Craig York. Now it's time for our invocation that will be presented by Pastor Travis Cook of West Ashboro Church of God. I do want to take just a moment and have prayer here in just a minute. Prayer is more of a heart attitude and a semblance of structure from the inside more than it is the words that we are saying. So that our hearts are in tune with the Lord and inviting his presence in and talking to him from that place in our heart. And so to do that today, I want us just to take a moment and prepare our hearts as we think about prayer. Prayer touches the heart of God. It ministers to him and it allows him to come and minister to us. We're here today celebrating veterans and sacrifice and offering oneself. And I can't think of a greater sacrifice than the sacrifice of Jesus Christ who laid his life down for all of us. And so as we prepare our hearts with that in mind today, let us remember both Christ and the 
veterans who offer themselves and give themselves for this country, that you and I can stand here and do this today and pray in real words. We don't have to pray inside. We don't have to pray quietly today. But we can pray real words out loud in a free country. Aren't you grateful for this country today? So let's take a moment and bow our heads for prayer. Father, we come to you today and we thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice of great men and women who have offered themselves as a living testimony to freedom. Lord, we pray over the events of today, this time together, the stories shared, the prayers prayed, the honor shown, and we give you praise for this country that we are living in. Lord, we thank you for Jesus Christ. His shed blood, his power, his anointing, his grace, and his love. Lord, for allowing us this time to be together. I pray for each veteran, their homes, their hearts. I pray, Lord, for the nationalism across the country to be upward and lifted towards you, God. I pray for hearts to be united around the cross of Calvary, Lord, where we could all offer sacrifice. God, we ask you today to be with us here on this great Veterans Day. Lord, that we honor those men and women who have laid their lives on the line, willing to give it all. I pray you'll bless their families, bless their children, and that you'll call peace into their lives today. All across Randolph County, Lord, as we celebrate this great day, I pray that there will be true patriotism and a mindset to love the flag of the United States of America and the people that have offered themselves for this country. Lord, we thank you for this time. We offer grace today to each hearer and that you will be with each family in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we all said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Cook. Uh, indulge me for a moment, if you will. Of course, it is Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day to all the veterans. And of course, this is the annual Field of Honor where we honor our military, but we also honor other folks, be they family, co-workers, COVID-19 heroes, whomever. And uh, you'll be able to purchase a flag. There is a unit out front, and you purchase a flag for $40. That flag is yours along with uh, the rebar, if you want it on the closing ceremony. We can't take it today. Closing ceremony on Sunday at three o'clock in the afternoon. We were gonna have a flyover, but the weather, of course, uh, nixed that for now. We hope that that's gonna happen at the closing ceremony on Sunday at the three o'clock in the afternoon. If you can make it back out, bring some people with you, please, because we owe it on this Veterans Day to our veterans and to those heroes that I spoke about. We owe it to them, too. So let me, if you'll indulge me, thank some sponsors, because this couldn't happen without the Asheville Randolph Chamber of Commerce, without Asheville Rotary, and without the sponsors. So I want to thank Post Consumer Brands, a Patriot sponsor, at the Hero Level Sponsorship, Advisors Financial Center, Bean Signs Incorporated, WKXR Radio, I didn't write that, uh, and WZO Radio, Ashboro City Schools uh, would be a field sponsor, along with Chick-fil-A, Claps Convalescent Nursing Home, Fidelity Bank, the Fidelity Bank, First Bank, Pamela Hill, Clerk of Court, North Carolina Aviation Museum and Hall of Fame, Oliver Rubber Company, LLC, RCI Doors, Randolph Communications, Randolph County Sheriff's Office, Sunbelt Reynolds, Truist, that is Truist Bank, Truliant Federal Credit Union, Juwari Charter Academy, Ashboro Fire and Security, J.C. Betts, Edward Wyndham, DDA, PA, Equitable Advisors, James Gowan, Catherine L. Holman, CPA, Keller Williams Realty, Klausner Homes Furnishings, the Law Office of B. Tyler Brooks, PLLC, Randolph Community College, Randolph County Senior Adults Association Incorporated, 
Ready Telecom Incorporated, John and Nan Rebel, and the Tempkin Company. Can we give them a round of applause? It is time now for our keynote speaker who does not need an introduction. I think we know about this person, but uh, I'm gonna give you just a little bit that you may not know about this esteemed guest that we have. He served as a U.S. Army Reserve's chaplain for seven years and a North Carolina Air National Guard chaplain for 15 and a half years. He has military experience. I can't tell you all of that, so I can give you a few highlights of it. It's, it's that extensive. He served as chaplain for two airplane crashes, served as chaplain on a French nuclear base, he ministered to wounded troops from the Middle East, the wars that were evacuated to Germany. He provided marriage retreats for hundreds of airmen and their spouses returning from lengthy overseas deployments. He was called to active duty at the Pentagon to minister to and counsel with those affected by the 9-11 terrorist attack on the Pentagon. He retired as the wing chaplain of the 145th Airlift Wing, North Carolina Air National Guard, with the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. I could go on and on and on. You know him as the esteemed former president of Randolph Community College. Please welcome Dr. Bob, Dr. Robert Bob Shackleton. Meaningful. It's meaningful to keep uh, our military heritage alive in our communities and in the minds of our children. I remember standing in a in a field of olive trees out in the south of France after 9/11, and I was there for a ceremony to to honor the Americans who had come in in World War II and saved France from Germany. And the reason we had it out in the middle of a Olive Field is because the American plane had been shot down and the crew killed there on that spot. And they took a piece of that plane and bolted it to a huge rock out there. And every year, the people of that village came out and had a ceremony to honor the Americans. And I thought to myself standing out there, do the Americans honor the Americans who paid such a price and did such a thing? And how moving it was to see the young people that French village in their native French costume stand out there and sing the French national anthem and then flawlessly sing the American national anthem in honor of the Americans who fought for them. And so that's the surprise that I'm here today, that you're here today, and thank you for your part in remembering those who served. It was the 11th hour of the 11th day the 11th month, 1938, when the armistice was signed, the major conflicts ended and the armistice was signed with Germany. And, uh, excuse me, and the, the World War I ended and it became Armistice Day. Until 1954, when that was changed to Veterans Day to honor all of the American veterans and not just the veterans of World War I. Those weren't my notes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, but, but we honor now all the veterans. And, and, and that's considerable. How, how many veterans have we had serving, protecting our country? 19 million veterans over the past couple of centuries. 19 million. Now, that's a lot of people. Well, that's only 7% of the population. 7% of the population made the sacrifices and are making the sacrifices to defend the 93% so we can live in freedom and peace without worry. 
When I came in today, I did not see any tanks on the street. I did not see any military aircraft patrolling overhead and right flying over the bomb out buildings in downtown Asheboro. I didn't come in under an uh, armed guard and duck and run through the door because of sniper shots. We live in freedom. We walk in peacefully, we'll walk out peacefully, and we'll enjoy our freedoms because through the years, over 19 million men and women have put on the uniform, have given up their, the luxuries of their home, the companionship of their families, their regular routines, their other life dreams, they've put all that aside and they've gone and they've served to preserve for the 93% of us the freedoms and liberties that we enjoy so much. Well, why would anybody do that? I mean, what is it about the military? Why would anybody want to join the military? I mean, people say, well, I'm not doing that. That's dangerous. Well, you could get killed over there. People get killed all the time in the military. I'm not doing that. Or they say, well, you've got to leave home and leave your family and all that. And, and your wife's going to leave you. Your girlfriend's going to leave you. Your boyfriend's husband's going to leave you. I'm, I'm not doing that. You got to train hard, you got to get in physical shape, you got to work hard. I, I'm just going to go on my other places. I'm not going to Why would anybody join the military? Well, some join because of a sense of honor and pride. I took this given a lot to me, and I want to give something back. Some people give because they want the GI Bill to pay for their education later down the road. They want those educational opportunities. Uh, some uh, join because of the, the skills they're going to learn, they're going to convert into civilian. Uh, careers when they get out. Some join because of their, their families or have a strong military background and heritage. There are reasons people don't join and there are reasons people join. I, I'll tell you why I join. There was a picture that sat in my house the whole time I was growing up. It was taken my father before I was even born. In fact, it was before my mother and father were married. It's that picture right there. It's a picture of my father in his military uniform. And I looked at that picture all my life growing up, and I thought, man, he's handsome. <laughs> and I thought, well, you know, he didn't win a Medal of Honor. He didn't win a, some prestigious medals. He didn't get a blue, uh, the, the Purple Heart. He didn't, he didn't do any of that. But he served. He went and put on his uniform. He trained, and he served, and he served honorably. He came home and married my mom, and they had me. And I watched, I looked at this picture growing up, and I said to myself, the time I was that big, one of these days, I'm going to wear a uniform. That's my hero right there. He had no idea in 1950, had no idea that 35 years later, this picture would inspire a son he never even imagined to go and get sworn in to serve 22 and a half years as a military chaplain because he was my hero. Of all the experiences, and thank you Larry for that very gracious introduction, for all the experiences that I had in the military, the one that really stands out in my mind is, uh, I had many life-changing experiences, the one that really stands out in my mind was after 9-11, I was called to duty to the Pentagon. I had some, uh, a specific kind of training, counseling training called CISM, critical incident stress management. And it's the kind of training that you use after critical incidents. It's the kind of training, uh, counseling that's used at schools when there's a mass shooting, that kind of thing. And I had that kind of training and they wanted me to come to the Pentagon and I did. And for weeks and weeks, counseling with the survivors and the victims. And uh, victims' families, uh, co-workers who had lost friends and colleagues and loved ones. And it was one of the most intense times of duty I ever experienced. You could come to me any time of day and just say, don't look, just tell me what time of day is it. I couldn't have told you if it was 10 o'clock in the morning or 6 o'clock in the evening. He was that engulfing, that all-consuming, that overwhelming. But a council of hundreds and hundreds of people there at the Pentagon, uh, 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 victims, families, colleagues, all of that. And some of the, uh, some of the people I interviewed, I will, I will never forget, I'll never forget the lessons that they learned from their experience, the lessons that I learned from hearing them and interviewing them. Uh, for example, the, uh, the man who was standing here at a desk talking to his boss, and he's having a conversation, and in the middle of a sentence, there's a blinding light, 
and he suddenly stands there like this and is shaking back and he looks up in front of him everything is gone the walls the desk the vault everything is gone and he looked what happened well the tip of that flame had come through and the very tip of the flame went through right between him and his boss it swept his boss away and his desk and everything in the office and he stood there and was shaking and trembling and was in shock. And they, they, he finally realized that he told me he was shaking as he told me. He said, he said I, I'm, a, I'm afraid. He said, every, every minute, I, I realized that life is a matter of inches and a matter of seconds. I walk around now wondering if a meteor is going to hit me. Life, I thought, was secure. I'd get up every morning. Well, of course I'm going to live through the day. He said, now life is more uncertain. I've heard preachers say it, I've heard it all my life, but life is fragile. I couldn't even listen to him and watching him shake and tears come down his face. I couldn't even imagine standing there talking to one of your closest colleagues and your dear friends, and suddenly he disappears before your very eyes, telling you, don't take a moment for granted. Live every moment to the fullest, because life is fragile. Remember counseling with a small group of people who were who were crawling down a hall and the building had caved in and and and, and the, the uh, everyone was, was gathering and they had to crawl on their knees because the roof was hanging down. They crawled on their knees and they were falling in the water because the water pipes were leaking. And they were in the water and electrical lines hanging and sparking and they were afraid they were going to get electrocuted and they're crawling in the dark except for the sparking of the lines. If they get to the end of the hall, they don't know which way to go. They don't know where they are. And they finally said, well, somebody needs to survive. Let's us go this way and y'all go that way. And maybe some of us will survive. And the group that survived met with me and talked to me. And they were shaking. They said, we survived. Now we feel guilty about it. They said, I know couple of those people in the other group, but one of them had a small child, and one of them was just getting married uh, this coming summer, and I'm wondering why their group died and my group lived. And they suddenly said, we used to take our decision making casually. Well, I think I'll do this, or I think I'll do this. He said, and now I realize that every decision in life is a critical decision has long-lasting impacts. Choose wisely because the, your life will be the product of the decisions you make. They said that one decision changed our lives and ended theirs. And I'll never look at a decision the same way again. I talked to one woman who worked there, one of the front desk in the Pentagon when you come in the door. And she said all the big brass would come through every morning to kind of grump grump. And uh, they didn't feel the need to stop and talk to a receptionist. But this one man came in every morning and he walked up to her desk and smiled. He said, good morning, Martha, how are you? How is your family? I hope you have a good day. And she said it was special when he came in every morning. Well, what was different about him? Well, he wasn't a general. He wasn't a colonel. He wasn't a lieutenant colonel. He wasn't even a major or a captain. He wasn't even a lieutenant. He was one of the housekeepers. And she said he took his kindness for granted because he didn't have any rank. And after she heard that he had died in the crash at the Pentagon, she went to his funeral. And when she was at his funeral, his son introduced her to the grandchildren. He said, children, this lady, Miss Martha, worked with your papa. And they came up with wide and I said, you work with my papa? You know, he worked at the Pentagon. And they were so proud. He was a hero like this was a hero to me. He was our housekeeper and they were so proud. They said, you know, my papa worked at the Pentagon. He may have not had the rank and the brass, but to them, he was everything. He was their hero. And she said, I feel so guilty. I never asked about his family. I took him for granted because he didn't Wear stars and eagles. It's a chapter pray for me that the rest of my life I don't want to ever look at people according to their rank again. If you're kind in your heart and especially to the little people, you're a hero in this society.
us to stories like this for weeks and weeks. I listened to them explain how fearful they were that the United States was under attack. How fearful they were because they were locked down immediately and they had children. Thousands of Pentagon children and grandchildren in schools out here and they think the country is under attack and they can't leave and go get their children. And they panicked. They were trying to get back to normal, trying to go live their lives with the lessons they've learned. All of America did. Our military went out, attacked Afghanistan, and destroyed the training camps for these terrorists. And eventually found Bin Laden. U.S. Navy SEALs killed him. And today, they're still out there protecting us. They're still out there protecting us. 2.4 million men and women in uniform today, while we sit here, 2.4 million protecting the hundreds of millions in the United States. They are scattered all over the United States at military bases, and they are in 750 foreign military bases, American military bases on foreign soil in 80 countries. They're not with their families today. They didn't sleep in no bed last night. They can't come down here and join us this morning. They're standing on duty. So you and I can do that. Thank you. How many veterans do we have here? Would you stand if you were a veteran? If you ever served in the uniform, would you stand? Thank you. Thank you. Special debt of gratitude is owed to each of you and to those who are serving around the world today. I thank you for coming out today to honor. I thank those of you who purchased the flag and were part of these ceremonies. We have some rain today, but my goodness, aren't the flag waving beautifully today? God bless each of you. God bless each of you who have served and will serve. God bless our veterans who are serving all over the world today and those who have in years past. And God bless the United States of America. Thank you. I think we can give him a little more than that. <laughs> Dr. Bob, Dr. Bruce, you can a ton of Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Time now for our benediction, and that will be presented by Pastor Dean Pollard of Northridge Church, and that will be followed by the Asheville High School Air Force Junior ROTC Retirement of the Would you join me in prayer? God, we are grateful today for the opportunity to hear and be reminded how blessed we are to live in such a great place. Today we initiate our celebration of all of those men and women who have shown us a better way, a better way to live, who have shown us what it means to lay aside self and to place the needs of others as greater than their own thank you that you have taught us that this is the better way to live, that you have modeled that for us in the way that you've given us your son. And God, I pray that as these flags wave, as we travel past them over the next few days, that you would stir in our hearts a sense of gratitude and a sense of unity, that you would put away from us division and that we would learn to live this better way. So today, wherever our veterans may be, we pray that your spirit would be on them and it would encourage them, that you would draw them close to you. And we celebrate today and in the days ahead, and we give you great thanks for them. We give you thanks for the peace that their sacrifice has given, and we look forward to the days ahead we ask for blessing in Jesus' name. Amen.
they had to have been outside and brought retired colors. We had no colors here to retire, so that won't happen. But uh, thank you for coming out, and don't forget we have the closing ceremony on Sunday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We hope to have a flyover at that time. The weather's going to be nice tomorrow, even starting tomorrow. But let somebody know about the flags that are just $40. You can honor the military. You can honor any hero that you desire to honor. And the flag is yours after the closing ceremony, or you can donate it back to the chamber and to Asheville Rotary if you'd like to do that. But uh, you get the flag with the pole and the rebar as well. So thank you so much. Give yourselves a round of applause for coming out and being a part of this ceremony. And a big round of applause one more time for the Asheville Roundup Chamber of Commerce and Asheville Rotary for putting this on. So thank you so much. Now have a great weekend. Enjoy yourself. Thank you so much.